So Lauren said, shoulders don't go behind knees. Any modifications? Okay, so um, if your shoulders don't go behind your knees, which is like 90% of the population, I should have started off with that. Okay, there's a couple of options that you can do instead. So when we were doing the lizard pose, right, and did shoulder behind knee, you just do lizard pose. But say all of this stuff where we're seated and you're like, this is as far as my anatomical, like anatomically my body doesn't go any further. What I should have said before is you can do like a seated variation of pigeon pose. So you can wrap the elbows around the shin, hold like this, or quite simply just hold the foot and rock side to side, okay? I'm gonna be real with you. There's some people anatomically, it'll never be in their bodies in this lifetime to get the shoulder behind the knee and that's a-okay. So what you can do instead is elbows, right? Uh, foot in towards the heart, rock side to side, right? You can also hold the foot and come out this way. Should have said that. So this could be your sundown pose. You could also hold the foot and take it like this. So it's like almost a variation of Padagustasana, yeah? Those would be options for um, shoulders. Wondering where you purchased your cork yoga blocks. These ones are also supported sole. She makes, I love, I love a lot of the products that she just started doing props, I think recently. She was only doing mats for a while, but she's um, come out. So this is, and what I like about them is they have a rounded side. They're thin, they're light, they're not as heavy as my other cork blocks, so I love them. I also love her straps, and I love her, her uh, exercise bands. So Supported Soul, she's, um, she's part of our giveaway, so you can definitely check it out. Any props assist for Sundial? Yes. I thought about it afterwards, and I didn't tell you guys to grab a strap, so I'm going to show you what you can do with a strap, and let me just go get a strap. I say this, and now I'm like, where did all the straps go? Give me two seconds. I gotta, I gotta move around and find the straps. Okay, there it is. All right. So what you can do with a strap for sundial pose, okay? I love this one with a strap. So you can either do I have a loop on this one. No. Okay. You can either create a loop. I'm just going to do this fast because the loop will take me a minute. You're going to put a loop around the strap. So say you can get your shoulder behind your um, shoulder and behind or in front of your knee, right? But you're like holding onto the foot and trying to lift the leg is crazy and also straightening the leg um, is crazy in and of itself. Here's an option that you can do. Go ahead and grab a hold of the strap, loop it around the foot, opposite hand holds on the strap, and then give yourself lots of give. Palm comes down to the earth, right? Shrug shoulders onto back, lift the chest, and then what you'll do from here is explore straightening the leg out to the side, but as you do that, straighten your opposite arm in the opposite direction. So you're creating essentially a V shape. You're still probably gonna be slouched as you do this. Shrug shoulders onto back, Booty is off the ground on this side. I'm pointing to it, but I'm not telling you. Right sit bone is off the ground, right? And then lifting the leg from there, okay? Another way to work on this pose is lying down because then it allows gravity to help you. I'm just gonna move this little thing, okay? Is that still going? You guys hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so same idea. And usually when I teach a 90-minute version of the class we just did today, I do this to begin with. So you can hold onto the strap with same hand, same foot loop around the uh, around arch of the foot, other leg straight out in front of you, or knee bent, foot on the ground, and then externally rotate the thigh. So toes go out to the side, heel up to the sky. And then you're gonna take your leg out to the side and up, meaning that my right foot is going towards the right front corner of my mat, right? And holding on from here, staying there, straightening the leg out, okay? So this would be the first variation of the pose without the shoulder. The next variation, right, is you come into half, happy baby, hold on to foot. Again, I didn't have time today because one hour just flies by. The right hand would go in between the legs. So same idea what we did lying, uh, sitting up, but lying down, it's easier because gravity is helping this leg to open up. Shoulder in front of knee. Yeah, you can bend this knee, put this foot on the ground, right? And then from there, explore straightening the leg out to the side. From there, holding on to the foot. Yeah? Okay. Good question. And in hero pose, is it important that your bottom touches the floor before leaning back, or is it okay to lean back if you're sitting on a block too? I'd love to be able to develop my hero pose. Any tips? Okay. You want your bum resting on something. So as long as your bum's resting on something, you can recline. If you're on a block, we don't want you lower than your forearms because it starts to create a curve in your back in order to bring your back down to the ground, and then that compresses your lower back. So the biggest request is that your lower back stays long. You're not having a deep arc in the spine to bring your chest down to the ground. 
I will say that hero pose is like not really amazing for most people's bodies because of the deep flexion of the knee, right? The deep bend of the knee and then the internal rotation of the thigh creates a bit of a torque in the knee. So it's not like a super great one. I've actually taught it twice this month, which is hilarious because I rarely ever teach it these days, but I felt like it's, uh, it does a lot of things in a very short period of time, which I like. So that would be how Annie would develop your hero pose. What can I do to strengthen wrists? They hurt after wheel, for example. Okay, so we can't strengthen our wrists. They're a joint, um, but we can strengthen the forearms and we can strengthen the hands. So ways of doing that would be, I'm gonna be super real about it, rowing. That's what worked for me. Use a rowing machine, okay? The idea of gripping and pulling strengthens um, not only your hands, but also strengthens your forearms. That's what worked for me. It's like I just started, I added it to like my workout routine and I rode like a couple days a week and that really, really helped to strengthen my forearms, okay? So if you're feeling in your wrists, it means that you're not engaging the muscles around on either side of the joint, okay? Um, and so the next part of it in terms of hands is you really want to, can you get, I'll do it up here. You really want to claw the mat when you're in any pose where you have weight bearing in your hands. So plank pose, downward dog, those are two great ones to start with. Claw, claw, claw to strengthen your hands. Also, um, you have one of those stress balls. Squeezing the stress ball would be really good. And or, you know, from the 80s, that little uh, grip thing that has like two sides and like a little swirly thing in the middle. I'm not giving you technical terms. But squeezing that would be amazing for strengthening the forearm as well as the hands. So those would be two ways that I would recommend it. Do you do other body workout other than yoga? Just wondering if there's another kind of physical activity weight training that could support my practice. Yes. I haven't been able to do a lot of anything else much these days just because of the baby, but um, I am a hardcore everything else girl. So everything else looks like HIIT training. I used to, um, I really love classes that, uh, I used to go to this one class called Booty Love or any kind of classes that essentially strengthen the pelvis and the legs because for me, that really helps with supporting my back because I have a hypermobile um, pelvis. So I would do a lot of HIIT classes. Uh, so that's high intensity training. Um, I bike a lot. I used to swim um, at the gym. I do all kinds of, I do weight training at the gym. I love to row. I used to do elliptical. I don't do it anymore because it's not very good for your back. But rowing is something that if I'm in a gym, I do it every single time I'm there. And then I do a lot of weights with my arms, specifically a lot actually with my, for my deltoids because we don't do a lot of that in yoga. So weights in my hands and kind of taking them up like this and like two pound weights, nothing big and crazy. But really want to strengthen. We don't do a lot of pulling in yoga. That's how I got into rowing. So you want to try to, you want to try to get your body to move in all kinds of directions and yoga is awesome, but it's quite linear. It does very similar things in different planes. So for me, in terms of long-term uh, care, I do a little bit of everything. Yeah. And that's, I feel like really helped my body. I haven't had a yoga injury in years, thanks to um, all the other activities that I do. At what angle, so uh, Vishna says, at what angle should my knee be, whoa, things are moving. At what angle should my knee be from our hips when in double pigeon? Should my ankle be stacked on top of knee or hanging off the side? Great question. Okay. So classically in double pigeon pose, let's make sure this is still going. Yeah, great. Classically in pigeon pose, your shin stack one on top of the other. Let me move back so you can see. Your shin stack one on top of the other. Um, so ankles uh, directly over knees or knees directly over ankles, right? This doesn't feel right in everybody's body depending upon how your femur bone is fitting into the attachment into your hip. So you can absolutely have your, so my right shin's on top, you can absolutely have your right shin going further out to the right so that the knee can relax down depending upon the angle of, this is your femur bone, into your hip socket, yeah? So it's more, what's more important than anything is that you're not feeling pain or discomfort in your knees, right? And uh, your feet are flexed, toes curling in towards shins right? And that you're feeling this in your glutes, not your knees, okay? So always um, one thing that I try to stress, and hopefully you're hearing that, is think less about what it looks like and think about what, what are we trying to feel or what's the goal here? Work towards the goal. 